Okay, for today, we are mainly reviewing. Uh, if you're really looking for a review video, though, the review video for the Chapter 3 test, I would recommend you go back and look at yesterday's video. Today's is for 10-6, so yesterday would be the October 5th video. That had a lot of thorough review for the test. This is going to mainly focus on this kind. f of g of x equals g of f of x equals x. Do you remember me showing you that this is how you could prove two things were either inverses or they're not? You can prove it. All right, so I'd like you to try this for a practice one. This is review. Uh, if I give you f of x is 3x plus 7, I'd like you to figure out what you think g of x is. That's one of the test topics is how do you make an inverse. Try to figure out an inverse. I'm going to show you the notation. It looks like this. f negative 1 of x. We'll rename that g of x so that this formula applies. But that little notation with the little negative 1 power, that means inverse. So find the inverse of this. We'll call it g of x. You figure out what you think it is, and then check it by using this system right here. Find f of g of x, and you simplify it down in the right order, and you hopefully you'll get x. Simplify it down, hopefully you'll get x. I'm going to pause for a minute while you see if you know how to do those two things. Okay, let's see what random person thinks. It's row two, person four. That's you, Miss P. Tell me, what did you think the inverse was? Do you know? Do you think you know? Okay. Something, something over something. What do you think it was? Okay, let's talk it through quick. If this is y equals, then it's y equals 3x plus 7, and then you switch x and y around. That's how you get inverses. x equals 3y plus 7, and then what do I do? Minus 7 from both sides, and I get x minus 7 equals 3y, and then what? Divide by 3, divide by 3, and we have x minus 7 over 3. x minus 7 over 3. How many of you got that? Okay, good. Now, how do you prove that that's actually the inverse? You go through this process right here, and you should have said the f function is x plus 7 over 3. And where am I going to stick the other function? I make the x into an empty parenthesis, and I drop in the other function, which was 3x plus 7. And I should have said x minus, it was supposed to be a minus right there, sorry about that. Okay, cool. Now, here's the common mistake. People go, oh yeah, I see, everything cancels. Do, 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 do. No, no credit. Why not? Because you have to show that they cancel in a certain order. Which of these can actually cancel? Only one, only one pair can. The sevens. Why can't this cancel this? Because it's in the middle of a subtract problem here. That's not legal. So I can cancel these two, though, and then rewrite it as 3x over 3. And then I can show that cancels second, and it does equal x. Cool. Yes, sir. I could have those two reversed. Thank you. Now that they're gone, I will act like it never happened that way. Is it supposed to be like that? Okay, excellent. All right. So, either way, they are positive and negative, and they will cancel. All right. Moving to the other side, just to show it real quick, in case anybody needs that closure of finishing the whole thing. And I start with the g function, which is empty spot minus 7 over 3. Drop in the f function, which is 3x plus 7. And now the plus 7 and the minus 7 can cancel. And wait a minute. Okay, I should do it the other way then. So that means start with the... 3 empty spot plus 7, and then drop in x minus 7 over 3. Sorry about that. Then, which of these two can cancel? The 7s or the 3s? The 3s. 
This could not cancel because that's part of a divide problem right now. Okay. Please don't talk when I'm talking. Those get canceled, and then I get x minus 7 plus 7, and now those 7s can cancel off, and we are left with just x. All right, x equals x is a great way to end this problem. It proves that you know they're supposed to equal x at the end, and it proves that f of g of x was equal to g of f of x. All right, so that is a typical one. Now, um, they can get more intense than that. Uh, I want to show you one more that's like of that ilk and see if you can handle proving these two are inverses. They don't look like it. Can you tell me what about this makes you think that they actually wouldn't be inverses? The bottom one seems messed up because... Okay, yeah, this one's got two f of x, or two x's, and this one's only got one. That's weird. What else is strange about this for inverses? It's not normal, but yet they are inverses. Yeah, there's no one on the top, and there's a one on the bottom. That's weird, but think about this. You get how there's an x over an x, and that's actually kind of equal to one? I mean, x over x is equal to one, but there's an x over x in the top one. And that's why there's a 1 in the bottom one. All right. So anyway, I'm just saying I get that if you first blush, these do not look like they are inverses. Would you please prove that they actually are? Use that formula. And yes, it will involve a little bit of heavy-duty algebra. This will be the type that would separate the A's from the B's on tomorrow's test. I will pause for a second, see if you can prove that you can be one of those A's. Okay, on this one, uh, I personally would, sh well, first of all, you have to, to get the credit for this, write out f of g of x equals g of f of x is equal to x. That proves you know what to prove. Then, let's do both sides, and as I put this one on the left, the g into the f function, I'm going to start with the f function, empty spot plus 3 over empty spot, you have to put the g function in both of those empty spots, which is 3 over x minus 1 and 3 over x minus 1. Okay. The easy way is to multiply and get rid of that denominator. Let me show you what I mean. I want to multiply by x minus 1 here and multiply by x minus 1 here and multiply by x minus 1 here. And if I'm ever unsure of whether or not that's legal, make yourself a nice simple problem, like 1 plus 3 over 4 should equal 4 over 4, right? Can I do this thing where I multiply each part by something? Well, sure, times everything by 2 then, and see if that's going to work. 2 plus 6 makes 8 over 8, and that's still equal to 1. You see how it's legal? I can do that. So, if I multiply everything by x minus 1, the cool thing is the x minus 1's cancel, these x minus 1's cancel, and I'm left with 3 plus 3x minus 1 all over 3. The 3 still there. And then if I can factor it, I should. I factor the top part and I get 3, 1 plus x minus 1 all over 3, the 3's cancel, and now it's down to just a plus 1 and a minus 1, and we know those will cancel, and I get x. Now, I know a lot of you didn't do it that way. You did it with the common denominator, I hope. If you didn't know what to do for the future reference, remember, it's a fraction. If you can multiply through by the denominator and get rid of the fraction part of it, it'll make it so much easier. But if you want to make common denominators, here's what you do you got to think, okay, the common denominator is going to be x minus 1. This guy's got a 1 for a denominator, so I multiply by x minus 1 and x minus 1. How many of you did it that way? More people did it that way. Okay, so that if I do it that way, the top of this becomes 3 plus 3x 3 minus 3. I'm multiplying this out here. 
all over x minus 1. And then instead of dividing by a fraction, I'm going to multiply by its reciprocal. Why is that smart? So that that can cancel that. And then I'm down to the exact same thing I had a second ago. And the 3 and the negative 3 can cancel. I end up with 3x over 3, and then the 3s will cancel, and it comes out to x again. All right, so I've proven on the left side anyway that it's equal to x. I know that was super intense, but hey, it, it was things you know how to do. You know how to find common denominators. If you don't, you should come in and get some help on that. All right, so this is a typical proof question, although it's a little bit on the tough side. I'd rather have you stretch you and, and have you do some hard problems in class that we can kind of talk through. And then hopefully when you see the test, you'll say, oh, that's not nowhere near that hard. It's, it's, it that's isn't that bad at all. Because we were lifting the really heavy weights, the ones on the test, hopefully, will feel like lightweight problems. All right. Your homework for tonight is only one slide. I would like to show you that one slide before I answer that question right there. Only this one. Because these can be tricky to find inverses for. When there's a point, it's not that bad. Like, if I know that there's 0 comma a half on my original function, what has to be on my inverse? 1 half comma 0. You switch them around. So over 1 half and up 0. So that, that is the beginning of my inverse. Then you've got to remember it's a reflection across this line. The line y equals x. It's a reflection across that line. How about this point? It doesn't give me two coordinates, but it was negative 1, comma, 0. And if it was negative 1, comma, 0, what has got to be on my inverse? 0, comma, negative 1. So that's down here. Now is it starting to shape up? There's my inverse. That's just one of them. Try to find the inverse on this whole page. Do all of them on that one page. But that's the only thing I'm having to do as I required. Other than that, you can work on other practice problems that we have skipped over time. Lots of options. But use tonight to study for the test. Doing many different kinds of problems to practice. So looking in your notes, there's at least two different major formulas that you have to know for this test. I'm not reiterating them now. If you want to look at yesterday's homework or yesterday's review video, it would help you. Yes, sir. On the previous problem, which do you mean by the previous problem? All right, I think that's all I have for the video for today. Hey.